Some big news in AI land today. First of all, Stubbs. What is Stubbs? Well, so first of all, we have the multimodal Gemini that is being anticipated by a lot of people and could potentially be better than GPT-4. Palm 2, while a fairly powerful model that's doing really well for medical uses as well as for a lot of the robotic applications, is going to be replaced by Gemini. It's a powerful multimodal version of Palm 2 built by Google DeepMind. Demis Hassabis is the guy that's pushing a lot of that out. And it looks like it's a lot closer than we thought. And also that it's going to be powering a couple of new applications. One of them, Stubbs. What is Stubbs? It's a feature where you get to build and launch your own AI generated app directly for, from Makersuite. So here's a Makersuite. It's a Google AI product. It's a fast and easy way to start prototyping generative AI ideas. If you ever wanted to build an app, well, in the past, you either had to have the coding know-how or you had to shell out for someone that had the coding know-how to put something like this together. Even if you were already an accomplished coder, it still might take quite some time to put together all the code, all the resources, everything you need to make an app work, especially if it was something complicated and it required a, a whole team. Makersuite lets you translate your prompts into production-ready code that's ready for development environments, just like Collab in one click. I now have a functional prototype of the Palm API as a grammar improver. This data table just makes it easier for you to visualize and manage your examples. Like you saw earlier, I could just stop here and prompt the model with only examples. In this a video where they're talking about how to use Makersuite, they give you a little explanation about how to, for example, create a little app using Palm 2 that fixes grammar for you. To do. You train on various inputs and outputs, and then at the end, it spits out the code that then you can take, you know, put it into Colab, you can do JavaScript, JSON, Python, curl, etc. Pay attention to this part right here. The model is set to text bison 001. And you're using your palm configure, your palm API key here. Just, just keep that in mind for a second. But what is the leaked part? Where well, the leaked part is stubs. Now, by the way, when they say leaked, what does that mean? Could this be just a made-up source? Well, the thing is the UI is already available for stubs. It's just hidden. Dark mode is the trick to enable everything. If you know, you know. There's also a mention of a multimodal Gemini within the code. And multiple people have posted, but the word Gemini is beginning to appear in the code that selects which model you're going to be using for this. So this is, you know, legitimately part of Google's code. We just don't know when it's going to be dropping. We don't even know if it necessarily will be dropping, but it sure sounds like it is. All right. So this is Stubbs. You start with a prompt. Make an app that provides pet care instructions. We can have an image of your app. And then you have various ways to start creating that. You have a tuned model. You can have a back and forth chat a data prompt, a table that uses rows and columns to organize prompts, and a freeform prompt. This is reminding me a little bit of things like Chat Dev or even Microsoft Autogen. You're basically working with AI to create code, to create apps. You can generate, deploy, and even publish stubs. Again, stubs are basically apps, applications. And you can share them on the marketplace. You can share them with your team. It's not going to publish by default, but yes, there's going to be sort of a stubs marketplace, stubs gallery. If you've seen my video about Chat Dev, you saw me develop quick little apps in a few minutes or two with Chad Dev using GPT 3.5. It usually costs like four cents to eight cents to make. So basically, if you need some simple apps like timers or little games or even some video editing and tools, you can create it for pennies. And it's accessible to everybody. You don't really need to code. So certainly something like this is huge. The ability to quickly deploy customized software is going to be a big, big deal. In the past, you had enterprise software developed for the masses. Now, as it's becoming more and more available to create that software for the people, you have, you have the potential to have very custom software developed for very specific people for very specific purposes. Artisan software, if you will. And it does look like Gemini is going to be an integration in a lot of these, these things. So it's basically going to be just another model that you can select. Like, for example, here you can select Bison. That's the older model that we saw in one of those screenshots. And then we have our multimodal ITM which sounds like that could be the Gemini model potentially. So you have, you'll be able to do text recognition, object recognition, understanding images, etc. And as this picture shows, yes, it is referred to as Gemini in the code. The other interesting thing is that it sounds like the translation is going to be excellent. So you're going to be able to write in any language, not just English, and the translations will flawlessly and seamlessly translate from any language to any other language. So basically, whatever language you're writing this in, you'll be able to create code. So, by the way, this person is Bedros Bambukian, so I am not familiar with this person. A lot of this is seems to be confirmed based on the fact that the, the code is in Makersuite. 
He's saying the leaked images are not from any external source. This is his, he's the source he found that code, but he does think that this might be out this year. So we will see. Next on the list, we have Jimmy Apples is back to Twitter. Jimmy Apples, everybody kind of assumes that he is somebody that's internal at OpenAI. He's somebody that works at OpenAI or has access to a lot of the data, the secret data at OpenAI, and he's been leaking a lot of it. He's been predicting the new features that are coming out, the exact dates on which they will be announced, etc. So some of the recent posts, he's saying there's been a vibe change at OpenAI and we risk losing some key ride or die OpenAI employees. Then here he says, hey, Sam Altman, would you, it would be rather interesting of you to be working on a BCI device, not invasive, via a stealth startup. So BCI is brain computer interface. So something like Elon Musk Neuralink. Here he's suggesting that maybe Sam Altman is working on one of those himself via a stealth startup that's potentially non-invasive. And so this is Eureka, and we've covered this in a previous video. By the way, highly encourage people to see this if you haven't already. The This is from the people that made Voyager, the Minecraft self-learning, self-improving autonomous agent. Now they are, they've tasked GPT-4 to design how to train robots. In here, they were able to get a robot to spin a pencil like this. Now, this is in a 3D simulated environment, but these translate very well to the real world. And this is backed by NVIDIA, so they have examples of this working very well. And in fact, in some ways, training in a simulation has been shown in some cases to be a lot more effective than trying to train a robot in the real world. In the real world, you have wear and tear, you have you know electricity costs, you have tons of issues, right? But training in a simulation, you're able to do, you know, a million iterations, basically running the equivalent of a thousand years in the simulation and then taking all the skills that are gained and transferring into a real life robot. And that has been working very well. The drones that beat the drone racing championship, sounds like this is exactly what they did to train those drones. And, and this was kind of a big deal. I was kind of blown away by the fact that this is real, that we have GPT-4 able to train these robots specifically to write the reward functions for them to make something like this possible. A lot better than human beings get, specifically for higher difficulty tasks. Meaning that as humans get kind of stupid at doing something like this, as it gets harder for us, GPT-4 comes in and does this flawlessly, does it incredibly well. And it does it in new ways that we didn't even think about. And so he, has, he says, do you get it yet? Meanwhile, the big labs keep cooking, building, hiding. Luckily, there's some things cooking in open source too. So he's saying that, you know, the big labs, this is, you know, NVIDIA and OpenAI had something very similar. They've modeled something very similar. You know, they're saying there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. He also mentions Arrakis. So this sounds like a model that OpenAI was working on that, that didn't quite live up to the expectations. It sounds like maybe they dropped it. And then he makes a couple of reposts that are talking about Phi 1. I'm attempting to reproduce Phi 1 using only open source data. And again here, so it seems like people are able to start doing this 5.1 with open source on their own laptop, on their own computers. And if I'm understanding correctly, it's a language model. 5.1 is a transformer with 1.3 billion parameters specialized for basic Python coding. So it looks like 5.1, this is 5.1.5, is a transformer with 1.3 billion parameters. This one is, has not been, uh, it was not fine-tuned for instruction following or through reinforcement learning from human feedback. So basically this is like, the base of GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. It's not instruction tuned, so it's not like a chatbot that answers you. It's sort of the base model that kind of just completes the text. So here he may be just pointing out that maybe GPT 4 that is open source, or rather a GPT 4 like language model created through the open source community, it might not be that far away. That's how I'm reading it. Anyways, what do you guys think about that? It seems like some big things are on the horizon, and we might even be seeing some interesting announcements this year from Google and from OpenAI in November at the developer conference. It really seems like AI never sleeps. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.